I am obsessed. Almost a month ago now, I started making this weather simulator project. The concept was simple, I can enter any location on Earth, and it would simulate what the weather looked like there. Being honest, this was meant to take less than a week to complete, but here we are a month later. And well, here's the process I went through to make it. Starting like I always do with an empty project. Now the actual first step required me to go outside, which is quite the unusual for me. But I needed to gather evidence of what I actually needed to simulate. I came to the conclusion that clouds would be a nice starting point. Now this was all good until I realized that there are about 20 different ways to create clouds. So it's been a week since then, because I spent all of that time trying out different methods to create clouds. And instead of boring you with all the attempts, here are two that work the best. Volumetric clouds and shader based clouds. I opted for the shader based clouds because, well, at the end of the day I decided what I wanted and that is the one I want, so yeah. That's kind of my only main reason. So these are the clouds I created and honestly, they're beautiful. The way they work is also not complicated. I generate a simple noise map. I then have that noise map tile and move. And then actually I do this process again to layer two noise maps. But the important part is to have them move at different speeds so that it's obvious that there are two things there. It basically gives us the effect that there are multiple layered clouds. I then turn the dark parts transparent and we essentially have clouds now. With a few extra tweaks like making the corners fade out and adding some color, we get these cool clouds. And now I can create a material of them and place it onto a dome resulting, well, in the following effect. Okay, next up I need to gather real-time data. Like I mentioned earlier, I want this to simulate what the weather looks like at any location. And to do that, we need to be able to get weather data. So I found this website here that allows me to create an API key. And essentially, we can connect to this key and get real-time data. Now, running that request will most definitely fry my PC because currently it's requesting data from every location that exists. And according to Google, there is over 4 million different cities and towns. Huh. So to prevent that from happening, we need to narrow down the data that we are requesting. And we can just do this by supplying a location ourselves. If I run the request now, for example with New York as our location, we'll get this file, which has a bunch of weather data. But this isn't very readable, and there is no way to currently use this in Unity. So we need to convert this JSON file to some variables that we can store. To make it a little bit more manageable, I created some custom classes for it. And now we can view our data in Unity and actually access it. The final step is making this data affect our scene. And since we only have clouds at the moment, that's all we need to do. First thing we can change is how many clouds we can see. The data has a value called clouds that ranges from 0 to 100. 0 means no clouds, and 100 means a metric ton of them. So we can pass that value into our shader. The second thing we can do is based on this condition value, change the color of the clouds. And finally, have the speed be affected by other pieces of data. So now the clouds will look different depending on the location we enter. Which is cool. Stage 2 of the simulator is particles. So obviously in real life we can encounter things such as rain, snow and hail. So I created particles equivalent to each of those. Here we have rain, this is snow, and finally hail. Then I needed to link each of those to the weather data. So for the rain, I have the emission rate over time change based on how much it rains, which we can determine from the precipitation mm. Precipitation in millimeters, aka mm, measures the depth of water that falls over an area. Basically, we can tell how hard it must be raining. Generally, these are the values that I used. So now if it's not raining, the rate will be zero, so no particles, and if it is, it will be higher. And as for the snow and hail, since there is no piece of data that tells us whether it's snowing or hailing, all I do is look out for the word snow or hail in the condition variable. And if that is the case, enable the particles. Now before we move on to the next stage, I always get asked how I learn new skills like programming, art, game dev, etc. And if any of you are interested in learning the following, today's sponsor Skillshare is the answer to that. I've recently been following the Your First Day in Blender 3D class, which helps you get started in Blender 3D, and after finishing it leaves you knowing how to actually use Blender, and of course use those skills to make games, designs, artwork, etc. 
The course goes over the basics of navigating Blender to finishing up with creating this awesome, cute frog. Now, for those who have never heard of Skillshare, it's the largest community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts. Ranging across different categories like illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. Something awesome Skillshare has is these learning paths, which essentially is hand-picked sequential classes. So that you can open up one of these paths and have everything you may need in one place. Also, with school breaks and summer holidays, many of you may find yourself with more time to explore hobbies or other interests. I plan to make the most of my summer by delving deep into art and 3D modelling. If any of this sounds interesting, then check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today because it's free for a month. Now let's continue. Okay, one problem we have right now is that the scene looks very empty, so we need to add some terrain. Okay, so admittedly I spent the last day or so trying to generate location accurate terrain. So basically you could enter something like New York and get an accurate representation of New York. I did this by getting myself an API key from Google Maps and then creating a plane mesh in the scene. I then used the height data from Google Maps to create terrain that matched the location. But here's where the problems came. First of all, even though this is accurate, it doesn't look too good. Like realistically, no one can tell this is New York. Second of all, every time I make a call from this API, I have to spend real life money. Now sure, I had a free trial of around 200 pounds courtesy of Google, but stuff was going to get real expensive considering that it cost me about 10 pounds just debugging one issue I had. And finally, most of the time when generating a new location, it lagged. Like, I'm not even exaggerating, my Unity crashed like three times over this whole time. So even though it would be cool to have accurate locations, I just created a little terrain scene that will be there for every location. Maybe eventually I'll change it and try to find a different method. Okay, after this I quickly implemented some fog. I created this fog controller that will simply turn on slash off the Unity inbuilt fog. I then have the density of the fog changed based on the weather data. And finally I adjust the fog colour and set its mode to exponential squared for a more realistic look. Another quick feature I added was this wet surfaces shader so that when it's raining the surface looks wet. This shader was created with the help of this tutorial. Yet another quick feature I added was some post-processing effects. Specifically, I changed the temperature value of the white balance module, based on the actual temperature in the data. The last quick feature was this wind particle, where the speed of the particles is affected by the actual speed of the wind from the data. The final stage of this project was representing the time of day, since depending on when I enter a location, the time will be different. So the first step in making a day slash night cycle is the directional lighting. This is basically like our sun. The lower the value, the darker it will be, and the higher the value, the lighter it will be. So we can simply change this value depending on the current local time of our location. But it's still not looking the best, so to fix this we can also have the skybox change based on the time. All we need is two skyboxes, one to represent the daytime, and one for the nighttime. Then, based on the time, rather than just setting it to one or the other, we can blend between them, to get a more accurate looking skybox. And the weather simulator is representing time pretty well now. Just to clarify, I manually set the timeframes for what is considered nighttime slash daytime. In my case, I made it dark from 11pm to 6am, and daytime from 6am to 11, with a peak at 12pm and dusk time at 8. So with that, the project is finished. I can enter any location, for instance my own, and well, the weather looks pretty similar. Quick disclaimer, I won't be releasing this project because first of all, I'd have to remove all the API keys since they are individual. And without them, the project doesn't work. And also, the project definitely could do with some improving. And for those who want to start learning a new skill, check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today because it's free for a month. Bye!